Hi, welcome to Dr. Pat TV. Uh, in this problem, uh, in this uh, video, basically we're looking at applications of maximum and minimum. So we're going to start using in word problems the skills that we have for taking the derivative, setting it equal to zero, and, and solving for whatever we're looking for. So that's what we'll be using. Okay, now when I'm doing word problems, yeah, I know the dreaded word problem kind of situation, I've got a basic approach. Uh, this approach is pretty standard. You've seen variate, you can see variations in textbooks all, all across the across the country. Uh, one of the first things I like to do is identify the goal. I like to figure out what I'm trying to find. And then my second step is list the information. Um, sometimes when I'm reading a word problem, some of the information is valuable and sometimes it's just basically extra stuff. And the only way for me to know if it's valuable or extra stuff is if I know what I'm looking for, if there's something related that way. So that's why I like to identify the goal, what I want to find first, and then I list my information. Third thing I like to do is then brainstorm relationships. Basically what I'm doing is I'm just figuring out all the kind of formulas. I'm bringing the formulas that I know up in front so that I can kind of see if there's a formula related to that information. That's what I want to do. Try and figure out what I got to play with. And then the fourth step is I got to make a strategy. How do all these relationships formulas fit with the information that I have and then the goal that I'm looking for? Step number five is, hey, it's the do it. It's the do it step, or do the steps here. So I just, what strategy I'm making, I'm now actually going to do it. I'm going to do the solving, the actual algebra, the crunching, that kind of stuff. And then step number six is I got to check the results. I have to be honest, checking the results, not something I've done all the time as a student and as a teacher kind of thing, because I'm really lazy. I got to admit it. I'm lazy. When I get my answer, I'm happy. I'm ready to go. But then there's times when I made a small calculation error and my answer wasn't right and I've just embarrassed myself in front of everybody in my class. So one of the things I recommend is just check your result. And what I mean by that is just kind of do a little mental check to see if it fits or it's making sense. That's what it's really about. Does your result make sense? All right, so now let's do a word problem, kind of follow this, uh, this approach. So what I have here is an example. Uh, we're making a sport gloves. I got a demand function. We've got some information here. We've got some information about the average cost. That's $6.50 per glove. And then the question is asking what price will optimize profits. So that's our, our, our word problem that we're playing with. Nice, straightforward easy one to do. Okay, to model this, step number one, identify the goal. Have to be honest with you. As a math teacher, I know from experience, looking at textbooks, I'm looking at problems a lot. It's the last sentence. Usually what we have, I know it's not the real world where in the real world you're working with a client, your client's not telling you what they want. Sometimes you have to really get it out of them. Sometimes you find that information in the middle of what they're talking about. Sometimes your clients are talking straight up. They know what they want. So it's all kinds of things. It's real world you can you're talking with it you don't know what they want it can come out at any time in the conversation but for math problems it's usually at the end it's usually that last sentence and so what we're looking for is we want to find the price that gives the most profit so when I do this first step and identify the goal what I'm really trying to do is I'm trying to paraphrase what the question's asking and so I'm looking at optimize what does optimize mean it means to find the best the most the least uh, the greatest the smallest but since we're talking profits hey our goal here is to make the most profit possible um, and so Optimize means most or least, but for profits, we want most, so that's why I'm going with most. I don't want to make the least profits. Who wants to do that? Okay, so that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the price that gives the most profit. Okay, so step number two, we got to list the information. In the word problem, what information did they give us? Well, I'm looking at that formula right there in the middle. They gave us the demand formula, and also they gave us information about average cost. I got AC average cost is equal to 650. So those are the two pieces of information that I've got to play with. Now in step number three, I'm brainstorming relationships. I'm trying to remember, oh my gosh, what are those formulas that I've got to play with? Well, one of the information or pieces things we're playing with is profit. So if I've got to find most profit, I better know how to make profit or, or, or calculate the profit. And I remember that formula. Oh, yeah, profit's revenue minus cost. So I'm thinking I'm going to probably use that formula. Another piece of information they gave us was demand. I'm thinking, well, how does demand, when does demand come into play? And then I remember, oh yeah, revenue. Revenue's price times quantity, price times the demand. And so that's where I'm thinking the demand. So basically, I'm trying to come up with all the formulas I can think of 
that's related to the information that's been given. And another piece of information they gave us was average cost. Oh yeah, I remember average cost AC is equal to cost over the quantity. So the formula for cost divided by quantity. And so that's what I'm playing with here is that piece of information. So these are three formulas that I can think of that are related to the information that we've been given. Okay, and so now I want to make a strategy. Here's the approach that I'm looking for. I'm looking for a price that optimizes profits. Now the key word here is optimize. Why? Because it's all about the derivative. So basically when we want to find the most or the least, the largest, smallest, those are optimizing words. So um, when I see those kind of words, I'm thinking derivative. What I want to do is take the derivative of the profit formula. Oh, but if I want to take the derivative of the profit formula, I need to know the profit formula. And so, in order to make the profit formula, I need revenue and I need cost. So those are things that I, that I need to do. Okay, so I want to take the derivative of the profit formula. That's my goal because of the optimization. Optimization is all about derivatives, but I need its formula. And so, to make the revenue formula, I'm going to use that demand because remember, revenue times cost. And to make the cost formula, I'm going to use the average cost information. And so, I've got this. So, this is my strategy. I'm going to be working backwards. My goal here is to make the profit formula so I can take its derivative to find the price that gives us the most. Okay, so that's my approach. I'm going to take my average cost which uh, I'm going to need my cost. I'm using my average cost. I'm going to plug in the 650, the information that was given, because I have that listed there. And so then I can actually multiply both sides by Q, and I now I have a cost formula. My cost formula is over here, and it's 650Q. So I started with the average cost relationship and noticed, hey, I can make cost by bringing the Q over to the other side by multiplying both sides by Q, and so then I get a nice cost formula. I need a revenue formula, so I'm going to use the demand. Remember that revenue is price times quantity, and we have a nice demand formula. We were given that. So this means wherever I see a Q over here, I can put in the formula 25 minus 0.5P. So that's the idea that we're using. We're going to make revenue. I'm going to plug that formula in for Q. I'm going to replace it, do a substitution, and then basically multiply, distribute that P through, and here's a revenue formula. So I have a cost formula, and I now have the revenue formula. And guess what? We can put those, oh, but wait a minute, i got to remember to do something. What I want to do is revenue minus cost to make profit. But i got a problem. i got P's down here in the revenue formula. Okay, the revenue formula has the variable P. But my cost formula, it's got Q's. How am I supposed to take the, the subtraction of a formula with Q's and a formula with P's? It just doesn't mix. It doesn't, doesn't work. So what we're going to do here is use this demand formula. We could put Q in for, I mean, we can put this formula 25 minus 0.5P for Q in the revenue formula, we can do the same thing in the cost formula. And so what we can do is, we can now get a cost formula that's also in terms of P. So basically what I'm just doing is I'm replacing the Q there with the demand function, and then uh, I'm going to multiply through the 650, and that's where I'm getting this right here. So now I've got a formula for cost in terms of P, got a, whoops, a formula for revenue in terms of P, in terms of the price. Now we can put it together. We can make our profit formula by taking revenue minus cost. Clean it up a little bit because that minus sign goes to uh, both. Distribute that through that parentheses there. And so that's what we get for profit. I've got my profit formula. Next thing I want to do is take its derivative. Why? Because I want to optimize. Optimize means the greatest in this example because I want the most profit. So when I take the derivative, nice straightforward. And so I get a derivative here. Um, you know, the power rule. Uh-oh, that's from before. Please excuse those arrows from before. I did a cut and paste kind of thing. Next thing we want to do is take the uh, derivative, set it equal to 0. Then we solve for P, and that's a nice straightforward 2275. And so now we have uh, our price that will optimize, that will give us the most profit. Now in step number six, basically what I want to do is I want to take that. I want to make sure that, hey, does this 2275 make sense? Is this the price that it is or is it way off base? So I can look at it in two ways. The first way is I'm looking back at the demand function, what was given. And basically the domain for this demand function and realistic for the application is between zero and 50. 
Because we can't go negative numbers for price because that wouldn't make any sense at all. And I can't go larger than 50. Why? It's because if we put 50 in this price here, anything larger than 50 would make this expression negative. And we can't have a negative quantity. Don't want a negative price. Don't want a negative quantity. And so this 2275 fits within the 050. So I'm kind of relaxed about that. Hey, it's fitting in the right domain. So that's given me something, uh, some positives about this uh, uh, the answer that we got but then also I could graph it so what I've done here is graph the profit formula so that profit formula that we made we graphed it and I'm looking here at 2275 okay so 20 22 yeah around 2275 it's around there and so when I go up to there it looks like I'm around the maximum so 2275 and I know I'm a little little bit larger than that but um Round 2275, that's where I'm looking at here. And so I'm looking at the highest point on the profit graph. So I'm feeling very, very comfortable that 2275 is my right answer. Am I perfectly, absolutely sure? No, I could probably made an algebra error somewhere along the way, calculation error, round off error. But I'm really confident that 2275 is in the ballpark. And that's what we do when we check the results. It's just get a good estimate, a comfort level of what it is. So there's an example of using the six-step process for solving a problem, a word problem. I hope this helped. Thanks. Talk to you later.